Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com, and this is the tutorial to go along with the community challenge number one. Now, the community challenge number one was to create a basic, simple uh, breakout game, and this tutorial series will cover all the basic elements that we needed to cover in our assignment. Uh, any of the little extra you know, flares that people added to their own assignment, uh, you can go ahead and ask them how they implemented those, as they're kind of uh, more of a personal feel to that person's game. And if they want to share how they did that, by all means, you know, go ahead. Um, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to cover the absolute basics that we needed to get the assignment done. So with that said, let's go ahead and open up Unity. So here we are. I'm in Unity. I've created a brand new project. I uh, just called it CC1 Breakout uh, for the Community Challenge number one. And there's absolutely nothing here except uh, our main camera, which is tag main camera, but I don't really think it matters. Now, generally, I sit down, I start doing a lot of writing on how I want my game to work. Uh, but honestly, it's Breakout. Uh, that is pretty much all done for you. You can go ahead and look at the wiki uh, for a Breakout game, and it'll pretty much tell you exactly how you play it. For those who aren't familiar, uh, you have this little bar down at the bottom of your little paddle, and you, you move side to side, and there's this ball that bounces around, and you've got to uh, protect the ball, kind of like an air hockey or pong. Uh, you can't let the ball get by you, and you just keep bouncing the ball upwards, and uh, it hits these blocks. Once you've cleared all the blocks, you're done the level, and you begin the next level. Uh, we wanted that for our game, plus we also wanted the ability to keep track of the score and the player's lives, and the ability to go from scene to scene. Uh, so that's really not a whole lot to cover, uh, but there's some very basic fundamentals here that you really should learn that are going to carry over to, from game to game uh, if you plan on pursuing a career in game development. So let's go ahead and start uh, doing these things that we need. So I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm actually going to go into my game view and I'm going to change my aspect ratio uh, to something a little more uh, liking to what I want. Uh, this seems to be about it. Um, you can actually go ahead and do the standalone version and actually type in the, the actual dimensions you want. I generally try to stick to the actual aspect ratios. And 4, 3, 3, 2, all these others are going to be a lot wider than they are high. And I'm thinking 5-4 is going to be the best one for me. So to start off with, uh, I'm going to need a ball to bounce around. So I'm going to go ahead and create this ball. And I'm just going to use the sphere that comes with uh, Unity. And here we go. It's down there. I'm going to go ahead and zero the position and everything else out. So it's in the middle of my screen. If you notice I'm in the game view, you can also go over to the scene view if you want and zoom in on stuff uh, to really look at it. Uh, I'm going to work with the scene or the game view right now just so I can kind of get the scale and everything else, everything right. Uh, so we got our sphere. I'm actually going to rename this to ball. And the only thing I'm really going to do here, at least right now, is add a physics rigid body. Now I'm going to be using the rigid body to take care of all of the uh, the bouncing around for me. And well, we'll play around with all the, the variables as we need them. Uh, for now, I just want to get everything that I actually need for my game set up, or at least into a scene. So here we are. Um, see, I've got my ball. That's pretty much it. Uh, you, depending how you're setting yours up, you might want to turn off the cast and receive shadows. I'm not going to be too worried about it just yet. Uh, so I've got my ball. Uh, the next thing I want to create is uh, maybe the frame around my scene so the ball has something to bounce off of. So again, I'm just going to come in, go to my game object menu, create, and I'm going to start with the cube. Again, I'll zero everything out. And here it is right here. I'm going to call this a wall. And it does pretty much exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to sit along the sides of my scene and basically something for the ball to bounce off of. Now, if you go back into 3D space, you'll notice there's a few ways you can actually lay your game out. Uh, you have... Uh, this little axis over here and you I can see some people that might want to actually look down on their game so forward would be or sorry up would be on the Z and left and right would be on the X uh, you can also do it uh, where Y is up it really doesn't matter but it is something you should decide now uh, for me just to keep things easy I'm just gonna work in X and Y so I'm actually gonna position my game you know like this here uh, let me just turn off the lighting here. So this would be the basic aspect of my game. But again, it really doesn't matter. Uh, pick one and stick to it and just keep in mind which one you're using. 
So we got this wall. I'm going to go ahead and start changing the size of this wall. And be, because I'm going on uh, Y is up and down and X is left and right, uh, my scale on the Z will have to change. Because uh, I don't really, well, we'll cover that in a bit. We'll just leave it at one for now. But basically, I want this thing to go along, if we switch over to the game view, uh, from the top to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to say, uh, let me see, we're going to have to scale on Y. Uh, let's do 10, not quite enough. Uh, I'm just going to make it really big, 30. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. But before I duplicate it, well, let's duplicate it first. And I'm going to call one wall left for the left side. And one wall right for the right side. And actually, I'm going to get rid of wall right. Uh, because it would just be easy to get the positioning off of wall left. I'm going to go ahead and start moving this over to the left side. And basically, I just want like a little bar showing along the left. You can see it just a little bit. Uh, that's about right. And if I come over here and look, it's at negative 7.9, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to try negative 7 or negative 8. And that seems to be pretty good. Uh, you can just see just a bit of it, which is what I want. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this. And instead of being negative 8, it's just going to be 8. And if you notice, it's just a little bit on the other side now. And of course, I'm going to want to change the name from wall left to, well, wall right. There we go. And I'm going to want one along the top. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate the last one I made. I'm going to call it wall top. Now, of course, you could go into some sort of 3D modeling package and combine all these walls into one. And maybe for your game, you'll actually want to have different shapes of walls. I'm just making it pretty... Pretty basic, uh, just straight walls. But anyway, for wall top, uh, I'm going to center it again, put it at zero. I'm going to want to rotate on the Z axis. If we go ahead and take a look here, uh, the Z axis is the blue one, and I'm going to want to rotate this 90 degrees so it's horizontally, you might see. Uh, so let me come over here and we'll rotate 90 degrees. And I'm going to come back into my scene view to move it, and I'm going to want to move it up on the Y. Um, uh, that of course would be the rotation so <laughs> uh, let's put the rotation back to C and go with the position we'll just move this up and again I just want just a little bit showing up by the top uh, that's pretty good maybe down a little bit more we'll just go with 7.5 uh, again depending on the actual assets you're using you'll want to change this a bit eventually I'm probably going to turn my walls off at least the rendering and just keep the colliders there uh, but anyway, that's good enough. Uh, I'm actually going to make it just a little bit 3D, my game. So I'm going to go actually ahead and add a directional light. Now, for me personally, I just don't like my directional lights being in the scene uh, to be seen. So I usually just throw them out pretty far. Now, I can't see it, uh, but I can still select it in the hierarchy here. And I'm just going to do some rotation on it. And of course, just think of your axes, uh, left, right, or X, Y, and Z. And I know I want to tilt it a bit on the X. I uh, want to go forward, maybe, I don't know, let's just type it in, go 45 degrees. And I'm going to rotate again on, let's say the Y, 45 degrees. There we go, kind of gives it that uh, coming down from this angle here. And that's probably a little bit more than I want. Uh, let's try maybe 30 degrees. And of course, you might even want to have this change uh, from level to level, whatever you want. Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, I can notice a little bit of a little too much depth here. Uh, so I'm actually going to go in and change the thickness of all my walls. Uh, I'm going to go 0.2. And... We'll just go ahead and change them all to that. And now they've all disappeared, so we might actually have to move them just a bit, uh, which is fine. I'll just start sliding this down. There we go. There's the top. I actually want to see uh, the light part. There we go. Because if you go ahead and actually look what we're looking at here, we want to see this bright part, and the dark part is the underneath side of it so of course you know if we zoomed out you'll take a look it's kind of like a little uh football posts so let's go ahead and do the rest of our sides uh i just tend to like 
whole numbers, or at least maybe not necessarily a whole, but uh, not a lot of decimal spots. So I'm actually going to stick with 7.2 for that. And of course, on the left, I'm going to go ahead and move it back in just a little bit. So uh, maybe 7.2 as well. Nope. Six. And I want it approximately the same width. It really doesn't matter, I guess. But I just want to go to one decimal spot for mine. And of course, this will just be the exact opposite. So this will be 7.6. Uh, six. Six. And as you can see already, the sides lit a little bit more because of the way we have our light shining. And hmm, I think I actually want the light to be rotated on the Y a little bit less. This is all going to be personal flavor, to be absolutely honest. Uh, so now the light's pretty much shining, if we zoom out to it, downwards, which is okay, which is kind of what I want. I, I want to be able to see the the actual sides, but that's pretty much it. I might actually want to go in and make my my walls a little bit thinner, uh, but that's good enough for now. So the next thing I want to do is actually create my player. And I'm just going to come down and, well, we'll just create, uh, I guess we'll just do a cube. And let's go ahead and shape it. First, I'm going to go ahead and reset its position. And I'm going to want to set it to where I want it to be on my game. So let's go all along the Y axis, and I'm just going to move it down. Uh, so move it back up just a bit. So negative 3.9. Uh, I'm going to stick with the same width. So 0.2. Looks like we can bring it down a little bit more. Uh, negative 4.2. Nope, 0.1. That looks good. And I obviously don't want this shape, so I'm going to scale on the Y, oh, probably more than 50%. Yeah, let's go 30%. Mm, 20 might be too little, but I'm also going to scale on the Y by twice the width. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not trying to scale the ball yet, because it looks like the ball is going to have to be smaller. Uh, but I'm looking at it as far as you know, how much distance it covers, or how much of the area it covers from left to right. And that's about the size I want. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and scale the ball now. The ball looks a little too big now. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 by 0.5. That's probably still a little bit too big. Maybe 0.3. Uh, that's a little bit better. It still might need to be scaled just a little bit more, uh, but we'll find out. Let's go ahead and make the next element we need, uh, which is gonna be our block. And this is what you want to hit to clear the level. So again, I'm just going to use a cube. Actually, let's rename this one here, which is our player. And I don't see a need to tag it as player, but just in case, since the tag's already made, I'm going to go ahead and make it the player. Um, what are we working on? The block. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. And of course, reposition it to 0, 0, 0. And I'm actually going to move it up just a bit, just so I can see it in relationship to the size of our ball. And I don't want it to be as big as our player. I want it to be smaller than the actual player. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and scale maybe a well, half. That looks a little too small, but let's go ahead and actually set the width to be the same as everything else. 0.2. And the height, I want the height to be about the same as the player. So let me see, what was the player again? The player was 0 0.2 in height. So I'm gonna go 0 0.2 in height on the block. And I want a little bit more uh, width on the block. So I believe the player was what, two? So what if we left the block at one? Mm, it's a little bit bigger than I want. Again, it's personal preference, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Uh, I'm going to make my blocks maybe 0.7 for now. And that's pretty much it for the actual 3D elements we need. Uh, the next things I want to start taking a look at will be our GUI. How are we going to display the score? And how are we going to display the number of lies uh, that we're going to be letting the user have? Uh, the easiest way 
It would either be use a 3D mesh or a, a GUI text. And honestly, I think the easiest way is just to use a GUI text. So I'm going to go ahead and create one of those. I'm going to rename it to score. And I'm going to go ahead and change the actual text that's displayed to score. Uh, it might actually help you position stuff if you format too as well. Uh, just so you get some sort of idea of how it's going to look. I'm going to put my anchor in the... Mm, uh, let's keep the anchor in top left and let's keep the alignment to the left. And of course if you start moving stuff around, like if you move the anchor to middle center, you notice how it, it shifts. Uh, generally I like to keep the anchor close to uh, where I'm putting it. So I'm putting it up here. So I, just so I know exactly, you know, it's always going to be, be positioned in the right spot. And it goes to the left. So let's go ahead and position this up on the screen. Uh, first off, let's move to the left. That's uh, a little too far. <laughs> uh, apparently, I'm not going to be able to slide it. So I'm just going to go uh, point. Uh, let's just do point one. It's too far out. And I'll just keep working it in a bit. Uh, let's go right about there for the where I want it to be on the screen as far as, you know, to, to the left. And then we'll want to move it up. Maybe 0.95, uh, a little bit closer. 99 uh, looks to be about right. So I've got my score up. And I also want the number of lives my player has. So I'm just going to duplicate scores. Change it to lives. Uh, change the display on you know how it's going to be displayed. So I don't know, maybe three. Uh, maybe I'm actually going to type lives colon three. And we'll want to go ahead and move that. Now I know I want the the Y position to be the same. Uh, the difference being the X position. I want it to be offset the exact same from the right as this one is from the left. So if you subtract 0 0.02 from uh, one, you end up with 0.98. Uh, but we're going to have to play around with our anchor. And I'm going to go ahead and move that to upper right. And text alignment to right. And there we go. Should be the same. And I believe this is all the elements we're actually going to be using for our game. I can't think of any right now off the top of my head. But if it does uh, end up coming up that we do have more that we need to add, I'll just add them as we go along. Uh, but this looks like a good spot to actually save our scene. So I'm actually going to come in uh, into my assets folder. I'm going to create a folder called scenes. And I'm actually going to capitalize this. And actually, no, I'm going to create a new folder and call it scenes. There we go. And I'm just going to call this uh, level one. And make sure I have the scenes folder selected. And I'll save it in there. Now you'll notice it didn't pop up here. So we'll just go ahead and right click. And we can just hit refresh. You'll get a little warning about it. Yeah, just hit reload, and you'll notice it pops up. And there's our level. Of course, you double click it, it just brings you back to the level. If for some reason you're not on this level. Uh, so that's it for creating the actual uh, assets that we need. Now let's go ahead and actually take a look at how some of these things are need to work. 